I think it was Hayden that said, was it Hayden or was it Colt? One of you guys told me, I remember doing it this way with X's and Y's and R's. Was it you? Yeah, okay. Okay, I was like, I remembered it was someone from over here. Um, this actually um, is going to go along with what that was talking about. It's Cole, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, let me just write down for you the sine, cosine in terms of the unit circle so that you can see why we're going to be using these, all right? The sine of theta is simply the y value. The cosine of theta is the x value. And the tangent, which is sine over cosine, would then be what? y over x, which looks a lot like another formula that you've seen before. What formula have you seen before that relates y's and x's in a ratio? Slope. Remember slope? Change in y over change in x? There's a real strong correlation when you get to calculus between the word tangent and the word slope, and that's not a coincidence. Okay? Um, the co-functions underneath here, these are all reciprocals, or the reciprocal functions are all the same reciprocals you saw before. So if the sine value is y, what's cosecant? One over y. One over y. If the cosine value is x, then secant is one over, one over x. And if the cotangent is y, is a, sorry, if the tangent is y over x, then cotangent is x over y. x over y. Okay, so you get all of those more or less for free. All right, so here's my best unit circle picture that I could muster on the iPad. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to fill in first the degree measures, okay? Because that's what you're most familiar with. So take some pencil. We're going to fill this in. All right, so if I'm on the positive x-axis, what angle measure am I at? Zero degrees, right? I haven't moved any yet. I'm going to fill in the quadrantal angles first. If I'm on the positive y-axis, what angle am I moved to? That's 90 degrees. If I go over to the negative x-axis, what is that? 180 degrees. And then the negative y-axis, 270. And if I go all the way back to where I started, then I would be at 360. Okay, so you can label it at 360 as well if you'd like, but this is sufficient. Now, the first angle in the quadrant one is the 30-degree angle. So that's easy to remember. It's the first, that's the smallest of your common angles, right? What's the next smallest of your common angles? 45, and that's, that's the next one. And then what's the next common? It's 60. And I contend if you know those three, you know the rest. So how do you know the rest? Well, the first angle, if I'm keeping moving around, the first angle in quadrant two is going to be the 90 degrees plus what? 30 more, which means you're at 120. And then how do I get from 120 to the next angle? I add 15. It's 15 difference. Or I could take from 90 and add 45. Either way, I'm going to get what angle? 135. I can add, either add 15 more, or I could add 60 to the angle 90, and I would get 150. And notice, from 150 to 180, that's a difference of 30, just like the difference between 60 and 90 was a difference of 30. This is all symmetric. Okay, that's why it's not really all that difficult to memorize, is because of the symmetries that are involved. All right, down here in quadrant three, same process. I go from 180, and what do I add to get the first one? 30 more, which gives me 210. 210. Okay, the next one. I add 15 more to that, and what do I get? 225. And if I add 15 more to that, I get 240. 30 more gets me to the 270, so that's good. I got all the angles right. 270, what comes after 270? Well, I would add another how much? 30, so I would be at 300. What's the next one? 315. And the one after that? 330. And lo and behold, if we add 30 more, we get 360, which puts us back where we started. Okay, that's the degree measures. You may not like radians, but the radians are actually even easier to work with. So let's take a look. The radian measure, the first radian, let's go with the red. 
at 30 degrees is pi over 6. 45 degrees is pi over 4. And again, I know you guys could work these out, but I want to show you the nice symmetry that's involved. Oh, I should have put them down here. Also, this is zero radians, zero degrees, zero radians for a start. After 60 degrees is pi over 3. It's pi thirds. What's 90 degrees? We've already talked about that one. Pi over 2, yeah. All right, now watch this. The angles that are the closest to the pi over 2, they will both be pi over 3s. What comes after pi over 3? 2 pi over 3. Okay? I'm going to fill in all of the angles closest to the y-axis. 2 pi over 3. Well, if I'm counting by thirds, I've got 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and then I've got 3 pi over 3. 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3. You with me? Where is 3 pi over 3? That's 180, yeah. 3 pi over 3 would be reduced to pi. That's this one over here. Oops, let me not write it there. And then what comes after 3 pi over 3? 4 pi over 3, and that's the 240. Okay, again, it's the angles closest to the y, the y axis, basically. What comes after 4 pi over 3? 5 pi over 3, and which angle do you think that corresponds to? 300. It's got to be the angles closest to the y-axis, right? So this is 5 pi over 3, right beside the 4 pi over 3, sort of. And then what comes after 5 pi over 3? 6, six, six pi over 3, which is 2 pi, right? That puts me all the way back where I started. So I could take this picture, basically, and I could split it into thirds on the top and thirds on the bottom or six pieces, like six pieces of pi, right? And I would have all the pi thirds, okay? Some of them reduce to whole numbers, right? Three pi over three is pi, but these are the pi thirds. Um, I have got one more quadrantal angle I haven't done. So that one was pi over two at the top. I'm at pi over here. What is this quadrantal angle down here? That's three pi over two. Okay, I have, let's see, I did all of the pi thirds. Let's do the pi fourths next, since the next one comes pi fourths. So I have zero, and then I have pi over four. Okay, so zero, pi over four, two pi over four. What is two pi over four reduced to? Pi over, pi over two, which is the quadrantal angle at the top, right? And then I've got, so I did pi over four, two pi over four, then I get three pi over four, which is at what angle degrees? 135. So this one is 3 pi over 4. Add another pi over 4 to it, and I get 4 pi over 4, which is at 180 or pi, right? I'm at the negative x-axis. That was 4 pi over 4. And then the next one would be 5 pi over 4. So that's down here at 225. Add another pi over 4 to that, and you get... 6 pi over 4, which would be at the 3 pi over 2, right? Add another pi to it, and you get 7 pi over 4, and that's at angle 315 degrees. Let's finish the angles. We've got one more set of angles. We've got the angles that are all represented as pi over 6, okay? Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, and so forth. But the problem is, or it's not really a problem, but you've already done some of them. So pi over 6 is at 30 degrees. 2 pi over 6 would reduce to pi over 3. I already did that, right? 3 pi over 6 would reduce to pi over 4. I'm sorry, pi over 2. <laughs> we already did that. 4 pi over 6 would reduce to 2 pi over 3. We already did that. So 5 pi over 6 is what lands me at 150 degrees, which doesn't look like a 150. Let's try that again. So this is 5, I'm sorry, 5 pi over 6. After 5 pi over 6, we get 6 pi over 6, but that's pi. And then we'd get 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 is at 210. We have 7 pi over 6 would be 8 pi over 6. Well, 8 pi over 6 reduces to 4 pi over 3. That's 
8 pi over 6. 9 pi over 6 reduces to 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6 reduces to 5 pi over 3. So this one is 11 pi over 6, which is actually pi, exactly pi over 6 short of being back at the, at the start, right? So this one's 11 pi over 6. All right. <clears throat> 